All right. So in this video, we're going to look at finding trig ratios given another. So um, we're told that the sine of theta, we're given the sine of theta, and that's negative a fourth, and angle theta terminates in quadrant four. We want to find the value of tangent of theta. So one thing is just a refresher. Whoops. One thing is a refresher. I'm imagining most of you, if not all, are coming to this having some prior knowledge of um, thinking of trig functions of any angle, right? So the mnemonic that most teachers show is um, all students take calculus, meaning all trig functions are positive in quadrant one, only sine is positive in quadrant two, only tangent is positive in quadrant three, and only cosine is positive in quadrant four. And then, of course, their reciprocals behave the same way that each of these functions do. So, for instance, cosecant is positive in quadrant two and uh, one. So, we're told that sine of theta is negative a fourth. So, the best way to think of that is um, actually to attach the negative to one of these numbers. So, let's just first draw the axes, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're in quadrant four, that's where angle theta terminates. There are many possibilities because there are many angles that can arrive at um, quadrant four, but let's just assume it was this one. So we'll say that's theta. And this is the terminal side of angle theta. And our reference angle here, I'm just gonna put an R there. This is the reference angle. And so we need a triangle if we're going to do it this way because we want to use the familiar definitions of sine in terms of right triangle trigonometry to do this. So um, it says sine of theta equals negative a fourth. Um, because of the definition of sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I want to put the four here, forcing this to be a negative one. So this is what I meant by attaching the negative to actually one piece uh, to the numerator denominator. And now that we have those sides, in order to find tangent of theta, since tangent is opposite over adjacent, we're going to uh, note that we need this side length here. I'm going to call this A, and we'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So A squared plus negative 1 squared is going to equal 4 squared. So that A squared is 4 squared minus negative 1 squared. A squared is 15. Uh, we can tell it's a positive length, right? It's in the positive x on the positive x-axis. Axis, so a is the positive square root of 15. And now I can use my definition of tangent in order to evaluate. So tangent of theta is going to equal. So again, we refer to the reference angle here to to um, to use our right triangle trig definitions. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite is negative one. Adjacent is square root of 15. Now you can leave your answer like that, but very often if you're if you're doing this like on a website, you're going to want to um, rationalize the denominator. So that's the correct answer, but it might also look like some multiplying the top and the bottom by root 15. It may also look like uh, this negative root 15 and root 15 times root 15 is 15. So that's a legitimate answer, as is this. All right, let's try one more. We're told that cotangent of b is negative 2 or 3. Angle b is in quadrant 2, and we have to find the uh, value of secant of b. So we're going to draw our axes. And again, we don't know much about angle b, but we just know it, it lands in quadrant 2. Let's assume it looks like this. Okay, that's angle b. We rotate an amount. There's the terminal side of angle B. And um, cotangent of angle B is negative 2 over 3. So let's impose here a right triangle. That's the reference angle. That'll help us with our right triangle definition. So remember that cotangent of B if that equals negative two-thirds, that means that tangent of b, which is the reciprocal of cotangent, would be negative three over two. 
and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So ignore the negative for now. If we're standing at uh, angle R, the reference angle, opposite is this, adjacent is this. Because because of the um, we're in the xy plane, we know that that must be negative there because it's a negative. It's expressing a negative x coordinate. In order to find secant, we're going to need hypotenuse. So let's call that c and use the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that 3 squared plus negative 2 squared should give us c squared. That's 9 plus 4. That's 13. Um, the hypotenuse will always be positive. So it's the square root of 13. And now we can evaluate secant of b. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And therefore, secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent. So it's root 13 over negative 2. And you can leave your answer like that.